I'm Lena Hall, and you're watching the Broadway.com show. Welcome to the Broadway.com show, your weekly guide to everything happening on the Great White Way, or as we like to think of it, the one place on Earth that's a World Cup free zone. Right, team? Let's get started with the news. What's the buzz, Paul? Looks like Kelly has found her king. Five-time Tony Award nominee Kelly O'Hara will spar and dance with Oscar nominee Ken Watanabe in the upcoming Lincoln Center Theatre revival of The King and I. Watanabe, seen on the big screen in hits like The Last Samurai, Inception, and this summer's Godzilla, will make his musical stage debut in the Rodgers and Hammerstein classic, which casts him as the brash King of Siam. The King and I will start performances at the Vivian Beaumont Theatre on March 12, 2015, and we can't wait. Professional troublemaker and part-time actor Shia LaBeouf, who seems to have developed a love-hate relationship with fame and possibly sanity, was arrested after becoming disruptive at a performance of Cabaret at Studio 54. LaBeouf, who reportedly smoked inside the theater, grabbed the butts of several actors, fed a woman a strawberry, and was led out of the theater in handcuffs and tears, is facing two counts of disorderly conduct and one count of criminal trespassing. But then Bumblebee broke him out of the slammer, put his I am not famous anymore bag back over his head and they watched the DVD of Cabaret like old chums. Are you ready to meet your new crush? He's New York City ballet principal dancer Robert Fairchild, the newly announced and dare we say wonderful star of the Broadway bound musical An American in Paris. The stage adaptation of the Oscar winning Gene Kelly movie will have its world premiere in where else? Paris in December. Then the show, which also features Leanne Cope, Leanne Cox, Jill Pace, Brandon Uranowitz, and Max von Essen will hit Broadway in the spring. Two new stars have joined the kooky Sycamore family clan. Emmy nominee Rose Byrne and Kinky Boots Tony nominee Annalie Ashford will play sisters Alice and Essie Sycamore in the new revival of George S. Kaufman and Moss Hart's You Can't Take It With You on Broadway this September. They're joining previously announced stars James Earl Jones and Christine Nielsen. Wow, this is one family we're actually looking forward to spending an awkward dinner with. Drama is heading to London's theatre land as Lindsay Lohan has found herself a job in the UK's capital for eight shows a week. The notoriously talented but tardy star will headline David Mamet's Speed the Plough, playing Karen, the role originated by Madonna in a 1988 Broadway production. Directed by Lindsay Posner, the show is scheduled to officially open on October the 2nd. No word yet on further casting or who Lohan's understudy is. I'm Karen Olivo and you're watching the Broadway.com show. All right. Stick with me for a minute, fellow theater geeks. Apparently, there's some sort of big, important, never-ending soccer game thingy happening in Brazil. It's called the World Cup. It's the reason your Google Doodle has been looking all weird lately. And according to upcoming Hedwig star Andrew Rannells, it's an excuse to get wasted. This week, Andrew tweeted, So the World Cup is basically an invitation to start drinking first thing in the morning, right? Most of Manhattan seems drunk right now. So what I've gathered is that sports fans need their favorite team to win a trophy as a reason to get drunk at sunrise. Huh, we just call that brunch here in NYC. Thanks for clearing that all up, Andrew. You can follow this Tony nominee at Andrew Reynolds. There are at least 500 and a half reasons to celebrate our star of the week, Alan Cumming. He's a Tony winner and Broadway.com Audience Choice Award winner, and he's played the MC in Cabaret for 500 and a half Broadway shows. It would have been 501, but in 1998 he was injured on stage and missed half a performance. It's quite an achievement to have a swastika painted on your ass that many times, not to mention the singing, dancing, nipple glitter, and putting up with one formerly famous unruly patron. Here's to you, Alan. You're the star of the week. The weather is really heating up in New York City, and the Broadway.com staff is obsessed with finding the best songs of the summer, aside from our typical rotation of show tunes, of course. So we asked the cast of Holler If You Hear Me and their friends on opening night which songs they'll be playing all summer long. Get your iPod ready, because here are their top picks. I'm probably listening to Ella Fitzgerald, How High the Moon. This is a new group called The Super Seniors. They've dropped a couple of mixtapes, one called Drunken Night Sober Thoughts. Two songs, actually. One, which is Birthday by Katy Perry. And then two, Morgan James, her entire album actually. I haven't got, I didn't get a chance to see Audrey McDonald yet. So I haven't been, I've been listening to old music. I've been listening to Billie, Billie Holiday because I want to see Audra. I am rocking out to Tame Impala. 
It's an indie rock band that I'm rocking out to. <laughs> There's a, a great Barry a punk band called Emily's Army that I've been listening to a lot. I'm listening to uh, The Roots' new album. Anything by Justin Bieber. Jellicle Cats come out tonight. Jellicle Cats come one, come all. Yes, it's true. London is throwing a Jellicle ball at the Palladium Theater this holiday season. And we're more excited than Buster for Jones at an all-you-can-eat buffet. Yes, we're serious. We're totally up for the kind of theatrical magic that a trip to the heavy side layer can offer theater goers. Here's hoping a Broadway return is next. Maybe really for now and forever this time? Here's the headline. If Disney's Newsies is still on your list of shows to catch on Broadway, be warned, you have limited time. This week, we're giving a big thumbs down to the news that the popular musical, which was an unexpected hit, will close on August 24th at the Nederlander Theater after two and a half years. But don't be too sad. Jack Kelly, Davey, Crutchy, and all the other scrappy newsboys will be out there carrying the banner on the road in the national tour of the show, which kicks off in October. Hi, I'm Nikki M. James, and you are watching the Broadway.com show. We always thought the Phantom of the Opera was a one-woman kind of guy, but he proved us wrong this week when Norm Lewis got a visit from his former Porgy and Best Flame, Audra McDonald. After being rejected by fellow Phantom star Sierra Boggess every night in the hit musical, Broadway.com photographer Bruce Glickus snapped this hilarious shot of the Phantom getting handsy with the six-time Tony Award winning Lady Day star instead. Watch out, Audra. When the Phantom gets a crush, he gets kind of clingy. Smackdown time! Last week we asked you which Gyllenhaal sibling you were more excited to see make their Broadway debut this fall. Jake will be headlining Constellations, while his sister Maggie will be starring in The Real Thing. Well, the votes are in and 90% of you picked Jake. Now, muggles rejoice, for two more Harry Potter alums want to tread the boards. Rupert Grint is following fellow Gryffindor Daniel Radcliffe to Broadway and will be starring in It's Only a Play this fall, while sinister Slytherin Tom Felton revealed that he would jump at the chance to appear on The Great White Way. So, who would you rather see conjure up their magic on Broadway? Tweet your vote of Rupert Grint or Tom Felton to at Broadway.com with the hashtag BeWaySmackdown and tune in next time for the winner. Thank you for watching another episode of The Broadway.com Show. We leave you with Tony winner Lin-Manuel Miranda singing 3090 about a milestone birthday in the City Center Encore's presentation of Jonathan Larson's Tick Tick Boom. See you next week. They're singing happy birthday, just wanna lay down and cry. Not just another birthday, it's 3090. Why can't you stay 29? Hell, you still feel like you're 22. Turn 30, 1990, bang the dead. What